Hi guys, today I want to share another success story with you guys.、Um, it's a random story that I read online. It's not my own story. Please bear that in mind. It's about someone、uh, reuniting with their ex-husband after five years.、Um, if you like the story, please give me a thumbs up. This would really help with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so、um, my success story: reunited with ex-husband after five years. Hello, beautiful people. Last week, I posted a moderately lengthy comment about reuniting with my partner five years after we were divorced. Several people reached out and requested I make a more in-depth post about my story. It's a long story, so you might want to grab a cup of tea before getting into this post.、Um, I think diving too deep into another person's specific.、Um, In attempt to manufacture results, it's pointless. We all see and experience the world so differently. The way I experience the process and feeling of successful manifestation may be different than what you feel. You might find your own perfect、uh, recipe that feels good for you. Man attracts what he is. The art of life is to sustain the feeling of the wish fulfilled and let things come to you, not to go after them or think or or think they flee away. That's all that matters at the end of the day. All the techniques are just to help you tap into and sustain that feeling of the wish fulfilled. Okay, so and now with my story,、um, September two thousand twelve and December two thousand fifteen. This was long before I knew about the law,、um, though looking back, I see how it was at work. While living in my hometown in California, I used to tell my best friend I'm going to marry a gay, red-headed Mormon go- Mormon boy. The gay and Mormon parts were inspired by the terrible movie Latter Days. I'm not sure where the redhead part came from, but that's what I decided. In 2012, I moved to Utah for school, which is where I met my partner, a gay redhead who was raised Mormon. We fell in love fast and hard. We got married after a year and a half. We got a dog. I also manifested this after being told this would never happen. The problems began in the summer of two thousand fifteen. I began to worry that I got married too young. I worried that I I worried that we didn't want the same things from life. We planned on moving to New York City together, but he started saying things like, "I really don't want you to travel for work. I wanted us to always be together." My chosen career logically involves quite a lot of travel, so this was scary to me. I had known what I wanted to do career-wise for seven years at that point. I had only known my partner for about three. My self-concept as a person pursuing this career was much, sorry, was much stronger than my identity as a happy husband in a loving partnership. At the time, I could not see how I could have been. At the time, I could not see how I could have both. I remember definitely thinking to myself, "This can't work. We can't be together." This manifested in itself in my circumstances and my body very quickly.、Um, I started hating his touch. I felt constantly sick to my stomach when I was around him. I felt trapped. And on edge, I almost felt a sense of fight or flight, like my body felt like it was in physical danger. That's how I strongly felt I need, I needed out. I did not handle things well. I was not a good communicator. I was unable to clear. I was unable to clearly express my needs and listen to his. Looking back, maybe we could have worked things out, but this is not where I was at that time. I decided to end it and move away by myself. I left him. In, I left him in August. He was blindsided and understandably pissed. The divorce itself was pretty easy, but the feelings were very hard. In December two thousand fifteen, I moved to NYC. So that's from. Okay, so from、uh, now, um, from January two thousand sixteen to December two thousand eighteen. In December two thousand fifteen, I moved to NYC. He eventually ended up in Hawaii. We were tagged 
We were technically both in the same country, but as far away as we could possibly be from each other. We didn't have much contact during this time. I was always open to communication. I'm friends with all of my exes. That didn't happen with him, though. I would receive a tipsy, pissed off text message several times a year, and if I asked nicely, he would occasionally send me pictures of our dog, whom he kept. But that was about it. At this time, I had no intentions on rekindling. On rekindling our relationship, that ship had sailed as far as I was concerned. I was convinced that I had made the right decision for both of us. I was successful in my work. He had a new boyfriend at that time. Life seemed to be moving in a positive direction for both of us. The end of two thousand eighteen, when I stumbled upon. Neville, the idea of conscious creation. Okay, so two thousand nineteen to present. In February two thousand nineteen, a coworker and I were getting to know each other. While telling my history, I mentioned that I had been married. He asked if I would ever get back to with my ex. I said that if there was a way for us to be together while maintaining the lives that we have built. Then, sorry, the lives that we have built. Then yes, but I didn't think that was possible. Two days later, I woke up to a tipsy text from my partner saying that he was still upset with me, but he's so happy that he loves his current life and his life would have been so different had we stayed together. This is when I decided to manifest a reunion. I imagined us together at a dog park with our dog. He would tell me how happy he was that we were together again, and we would kiss. I imagined and felt this for a couple of weeks. We didn't talk for months after the tipsy text. I have to say I was so focusing on. I was too focusing. Sorry, I had to. I have to say that I was also focusing on other aspects of my life at this time. It was and still is important for me to focus on all my desires, as opposite to putting every. Um, every as opposite to putting all my energy on one thing and making it some mountain I have to wrestle and conquer. No mountains for me. Please, um, in focusing on the work aspect of my life, I ended up manifesting an exciting job where I met someone else. We started very casually seeing each other at some point in March. I didn't necessarily write. Of getting back with my ex, but this opportunity was right in front of me, and I felt really drawn to this person. I figured, why not enjoy the moment of beautiful connection? Throughout all this time, I was still really invested in reading Neville and putting this stuff to the test. I focused a lot on my self concept. Throughout my day at work or at home, I would affirm that I'm the person I desire to be. It just made me feel good. I'm so blessed. I'm loved. I'm cherished. I'm respected. I'm successful in all I do. I always experience the best versions of the people I interact with. I'm always provided for. I'm wonderful at my job. So whatever good feeling things popped into my head, I was also manifesting、uh, silly and fun things because why not? It kept me excited and entertained. At some point, I realized that I was really in control of the perspective I choose. The perspective I chose to choose for myself. I realized I could take situations and assume the worst things or assume the best. The casual dating turned into a six months, into a six month long, surprisingly passionate,、uh, monogamous relationship. Toward the end of the relationship, my focus shifted to old, habitual thoughts, and I wasn't focusing on my preferred reality. I started getting too attached and emotionally. Um, reactionary to the outside world, I became stressed and anxious. I manifested getting dumped with ease. After getting dumped, I remember I remember I had a choice in how I saw the situation. I chose to be grateful for those six months. They were special and unexpected. I learned so much about myself, who I am in relationships, who I want to be. And what I want from life. Don't get me wrong. I'm a human being with emotions, so of course I was heartbroken and sad. But I knew that even this was another part of my journey to becoming the person I desired to be. 
I continue to focus on these concepts and apply them to the life to my life. I came to understand that truly, knowing that my source is infinite and connected with all that is, there is no separation between myself and what I desire. If there is no separation, there can be no lack. I cannot lack. I cannot lack what is a part of me. So when I connect with that infinite part of myself and acknowledge there's no separation, I accept that what I desire is mine. It changed the way that I look at and respond to life. It's not that I'm disconnected from reality and those around me. I just walk through my life with the knowledge that things are working out in my favor, so I don't have to concern myself with micromanaging the details or fighting the people around me to get what I want. Um, I began to focus on being in a happy, healthy relationship, and the bridge of incidents was laid out perfectly before me. My partner and I are very naturally. My partner and I very naturally got back into consistent contact. In February, there was an earthquake in the town his family lives in, so I reached out to him to make sure everybody was okay. This opened the door to more com. This opened the door to more communication, and we ended up checking in on each other during during quarantine. I didn't force things to happen. I didn't ask him about his relationship status. I didn't tell him I loved him and wanted to be with him. I just remained as present as possible and enjoy his company. I enjoy getting to know this new version of him. In the middle May, he told me his intentions stalking. Sorry, in the middle of May, he told me. His intentions in talking to me were that one day we could be together again. He said that if it wasn't possible, then we needed to cut contact with the exception of emergencies. I have to admit that a bit of old man pop in there. I began to think of the circumstances that appeared before me. We live so far away from each other. We have such different lives. He wouldn't move here. I couldn't move there. This is impossible. I responded. I responded and said I understand where he was coming from and that I would give him that space. This didn't really sit well with me, and I reached out the next day to fully express how I was feeling. I told him that I miss him and I wanted us to be together, but that the logistics of the situation were making my head spin. Ultimately, he said that as long as we were heading in the direction of being of being together, no matter how slowly, he was okay with it. We briefly discussed how it would be cool if I could come to Hawaii and visit him. We agreed that it would be nice, but kind of put it out of my mind. I have never really traveled for pleasure in my adult life, between work at my between work and my previous beliefs about money. It was never really an option. Um. So a few weeks later, we were talking, and I made an impulsive decision. Sorry, and I made an impulsive decision to just pull the trigger and go visit him. I thought I'm in a great place financially. So what is stopping me? The day before my flight、uh, comes, and I go to check in and keep receiving error messages. I call the airline only to find the flight schedule had changed. Since I bought my tickets through a third-party website, I had to contact them about it. I sat on hold for a total of about six hours that day. Nothing was solved. My partner was freaking out, but honestly, I was laughing at that situation. I've gotten to a point in my journey where I just automatically assume that the best of the best for myself in all situations. Why wouldn't I? I was cracking jokes, dancing. To the whole music, I drank mango white claws and closed my eyes and pretended I was re- I was already on my vacation, just being silly and lighthearted. I actually ended up just buying a separate ticket, a separate ticket for another day because I never got through to an agent to solve my problem. Once again, I have the money to spare, and I know that I would get that money back anyway. So whatever. The next day, eight flight attendants on the airline I was supposed to fly tested positive for COVID nineteen, so maybe it was a blessing I wasn't on that flight. The trip was amazing. He showed us. Sh- he showed up as the. He showed up as the absolutely perfect version of himself. 
We connected in a deeper way than ever before. It was really strange and lovely. We seem like completely different people, and I love the people we have become. We talk about our past with new clarity and appreciation. We talk about how we had hurt, and how we had healed. We talk about our views and beliefs on the world. We even talk about conscious creation. He showed me the beautiful island he lives on. I feel I felt blessed by my surroundings every day. We hike to beautiful water flo. We hike to beautiful waterfalls. We swam with colorful fish in perfectly blue water. Um, yeah. He had mentioned that at some point that we would have to discuss our future, and I agreed. I refused any thought of, of doubts or anxiety about the conversation. I knew it would be perfect and lovely, and everything would work out in my favor. The time came, and we had our talk. I was a hundred percent open and honest about my desires, my needs, and my deal breakers. He told me this. I was honestly a little bit shocked at just how perfectly we saw we saw eye to eye. I told him that I would love to live with him in Hawaii, but I would need to spend two to sorry two to three months in New York every year. I told him that I wanted to continue work, continue working in this business, where I would have to leave from time to time. And he was okay with all of that. Okay, so um. So the bridge of incidents that has led me here is far too complex for me to have noticed every moving part, and I'm sure there are things that I'm missing in this post. But I hope my stories serves as an inspiration to you. There is a bit of uncertainty with the exact timing of our future plans, but neither of us is too concerned about it. Until we are able to live together, we will visit each other when we can. And when we can't, thank God, I have my imagination where I can be with him whenever I want to. Okay, so I hope you guys like this story. This is um a bit of a long story, but um um I'm I'm glad that um everything has turned out nicely for him. Um, if you like this story, uh, please give me a thumbs up. This would really uh really mean a lot to me. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.